of the autism program at the O.D. Heck Center in upstate New York. In an effort to prove the technique was valid, he helped organize the most exhaustive test yet, one of 16 controlled studies involving 115 subjects. Facilitator and student were shown pictures, sometimes the same pictures, sometimes different. We just had a, a, a table which was split down the middle and the facilitator could see down one side and the student could see down their side and they couldn't see each other's sides. If you give them uh, different pictures uh, and the student types out a picture that only the facilitator can see, then you know that the facilitator is influencing the typing. And what was the outcome? The net outcome? The outcome was, was uh, quite dramatic. We had zero correct responses uh, for the students. Zero? Zero. So that we knew that there was a great deal of facilitator influence happening. The fact that people failed that test didn't surprise me at all. If anyone could be called the father of facilitated communication in the United States, it's Doug Bicklin, professor of special education at Syracuse University.